Hi guys, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Just can you give me confirmation? So you are able to hear me from participant side. So if I get some confirmation, we can start actually. I don't know. Okay. Hi guys, good afternoon everyone. So, okay, yes ma'am. Kedar sir, thank you. Shweta Mbari ma'am, thank you. Okay. Okay, sir, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So I was just facing some issue. That's why I have to log out a couple of times and log in. So guys, uh, just give me one moment. Uh, I'm sharing my screen with you. So we can start the session. Okay. Thank you, Kedar, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, guys. Uh, Ram Bao, sir. Thank you. Thanks for confirmation. Just give me one moment and we can get started. Right. So, meanwhile, uh, you guys know the drill. So I'm sharing my screen. If you feel any questions, anything to ask, so you can go ahead and ask and chat with me, guys. And hope you found yesterday's session very innovative. Uh, today, guys, uh, the entire agenda will be like we'll try to focus. Uh, more on the transformer side so i will take you through this entire architecture of the transformer all right and then we'll try to understand how the uh, tech generation has been done using the transformers all right so that will be the, our main agenda for the day and once we un understand the entire transformer architecture how this transformer is able to generate the entire uh, text all right so once we understand this tech generation so we can come to the critical things like how the entire things, whatever the generation has been done, how it has been critically analyzed, what do you mean by prompt engineering, what kind of a categories are there uh, in the prompt engineering, what are some key concepts, and then we'll try to look at the architecture of the large language models training, right? How, how will the entire architecture look like for the large language model and what will be the uh, entire use cases around it, like how to train uh, your entire chat GPT kind of model, and we'll try to also look that how chat GPT is getting trained, right? And uh, I will uh, try to uh, discuss two use cases. Uh, one use case I will try to use uh, for the sequence to sequence modeling. So we'll try to understand using the LSTM. So I'll not go into the details, guys, for the LSTM architecture. I'll just uh, make one code walkthrough that uh, in the sequence to sequence, I wanted to show you uh, that how the entire sequence to sequence things works upon. So I'll try to make one small code walkthrough. Uh, where we'll try to generate a movie sentiment analysis using this LSTM or a GRE network. And then uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, that in the end, guys, uh, once we are able to understand the car architecture for this entire transformer model, by using this transformer model, we try to generate a code. Uh, we try to generate the text. So I will be giving an input as a text and uh, we can generate the entire text around it, right? So that's what we'll try to make a code walkthrough. And uh, we'll try to understand the, some key constraints, some architecture of the entire large language model, how the large language model training is done. And we'll try to have a look, if possible, today. Uh, try to have a look at how this entire chat GPT is getting trained. And then, guys, from tomorrow onwards, we'll try to focus more and more on the uh, technical side. Like, I'll try to make one more use case uh, using the open AI's, uh, this API. And I'll uh, try to uh, implement some of the codes as well going forward and try to cover the remaining topics as well. All right, uh, so everyone is uh, all set. So guys, just give me confirmation to go ahead and we can start the agenda for the day. Uh, hope everyone has logged in. So we have a uh, 350, 20 plus people joined in whosoever has not joined in. I request all my dear professors, colleagues, mentors to join in first so we can start the discussion for the day. All right, guys. Uh, okay, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you for the confirmations. Sachin sir, Kedar sir, thank you. All right. Hi, Irshad. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. And let's get started then without wasting the time. Yeah, Aisha, ma'am, thank you. I was actually waiting for you. Uh, Suman, ma'am, thank you, sir, ma'am, thank you. Srinath, Naidu, sir, good afternoon. Hello, everyone, good afternoon once again. And let's get started. Hope uh, everyone is uh, now well aware of the agenda. Guys, uh, like, like we have spoken yesterday, yeah, 
good afternoon sir good afternoon thank you ma'am uh, thanks for your gestures kind gestures so guys uh, like we spoken uh, let's let's have a quick recap like what we discussed uh, guys uh, we were able to understand the entire generative ai stuff let what is generative ai what right. so my system is getting hung i don't know okay uh, what is generative ai uh, how it is different from the normal ai and when we want to understand the generative ai we were able to understand that mostly the generative ai is based on the large language models so one is like uh, the base model could be a generative pre trained transformer and the second is generative adversarial network all right so this is what we were able to understand yesterday and uh, we were able to see the entire use case that how this uh, gpt models are different from this gan model set right? and what is the output they are producing what is the input they are taking what is large language model we were able to touch upon the concept of the large language model and we were able to understand that the generative ai is nothing but uh, it is trying to generate some kind of output and that output could be a kind of a image could, could be a audio could be a video or could be a text guys right and based on the output what output it is generating we have to use the base model so base model could be a gpt model or could be a gan model right this is what we were able to understand and uh, this two model consist of the large language model so large language models are nothing but something called as which is getting trained on billions of parameter with a huge huge data with a very high processing power and they just are getting trained for month or so right so if we try to sp uh, speak about the application which is our more, uh, main focus out here the chat gpt the chat gpt's architecture we are going to understand entirely through understanding the entire generative ai concept of the gpt model and gpt like this chat gpt which in terms we is using the generative pre trained transformer today's topic will try to focus more on the transformer architecture why transformer came into the picture how the entire transformer is trying to produce the text right and uh, text which can be called as tokens and then prior to transformer how they are used to generate the text and what was the difficulty they were facing and then we'll talk about the sequence to sequence modeling right which is very very important concept if you want to start in the generative ai arena so entire thing starts with this guys generative ai generative ai consists of the large language model and large language model has a th these two base model based on the output right this is what we have seen so let me ask you a question uh, let me ask you guys question and uh, let me check that we are we all are on the same page so guys uh, when i talking about the gpt models right when i am talking uh, so everyone comes under large language model everyone agrees and this large language model compromise of the generative ai so guys uh, when we are talking about the gpt model so what will be the output it will be providing or what kind of output uh, when we are trying to provide using the gpt kind of a model so can anyone tell me guys so we have spoken that there will be two domains in the generative ai one will be the language domain correct right? one will be the language domain and one will be the unstructured uh, data domain uh, which will be like uh, images videos and audio right so on based on this output or whatever we are trying to generate get our objective we have bifurcated this model and let me ask you uh, this simple question guys that uh, when we are trying to use the gpt models generative pre trained transformer what kind of output we are expecting or for what kind of output we are using these these models all right so amar is the first winner so amar sumak saying the language like gpt language like model right correct and then guys uh, when uh, let's imagine this way when i am expecting the output okay in terms of a image or a video so what what kind of a base model should i be using i should be using it so that's my question out there all right language good one gunad jha saying arisha saying language model guess or prediction like human like text text yeah ma'am aisha ma'am uh, correct uh, text is a uh, important stuff here so when i'm talking about the languages guys all right amar is also winner he is very active today so thank you amar uh, gan model correct so guys uh, let's try to understand when we are trying to talk about the nlp task okay nlp related task where the entire things is related to the text or the generation of the human language right generation of the human language okay uh, satya murthy sir is saying nlp correct awesome awesome so when we are trying to talk about the nlp stuff all right so when i am trying to talk about the text right and when i am trying to generate a human like response human like feedback right human like languages feedback at that time i have to use the gpt kind of a models right which are solely dedicated for the large language model large language model right and when my output guys when my output let it be any kind of a input input is a text guys 
for both of them let uh, let it be a large language model or let it be a large vision model okay actually uh, they are not called as image model actually uh, they are calling this as a large vision models large vision model because they are, they are related to the computer vision right so large language model and large vision models actually llm uh, and the lvm large vision model okay so large vision model we are giving text only like i gave you example yesterday i will try to showcase you the same example so we are providing text only so text is nothing but kind of a prompt you can say a prompt is nothing but again the query so which will try to understand today what is prompt and how what consists of the different prompts and how the things works upon we'll try to touch upon it so first uh, try to understand the basic thing is uh, when we have a text as an input but out of that text if i am generating text so that is a large language model if i am providing text and i am trying to generate something called as videos audio right images and that is called a large vision model so this large vision model and large language model this uh, gpt model for large language model and gan kind of adversarial neural networks generative adversarial neural network for the vision models right this is what is our basic understanding i guess now everyone is comfortable with this so let's try to move ahead uh, we were able to see guys that how uh, the generative is different from discriminative because discriminative just trying to perform a classification here we are trying to perform a something called as new generation new content generation right that is generative here and we were able to understand the entire path like if you want to become a large language model expert what new you have to perform right so how to start where to learn and then we were able to understand that large language model are nothing but they are trained on the huge huge data set like wikipedia or encyclopedia like entire web data you are trying to feed and they are trying to generate uh, they are trying to understand the uh, statistical pattern and they are trying to generate the responses just like the human being human like responses language responses that are large language model which are trained on billions of parameter and takes the uh, months and weeks to train them right they require and that guys we were able to understand that as per the bifurcation of the entire uh, task which i am trying to perform we have a different category right so our chat gpt guys that is consist of this kind of a task where i am providing the text and i am generating the text right so this is the open ai this is the company uh, this they have introduced this model chat gpt and chat gpt is not the only generative ai tool we have a lot of tool and here is the bifurcation as per the task like if you want to create a text to image guys we have a something called as dali we have a uh, we have a stable diffusion we have a mid journey and then some other populars are there then if you want to create again text to video we have a synthesa we have a runway right and we have a text to audio this kind of a models are available and then when you want to create a text we are giving text and you want to generate a code like uh, we have a github copilot or microsoft pilot go copilot is there guys there are uh, various options which are available here also as per the categories i have enlisted all the things now you will you might have got the entire intuition that chat gpt is not the only model so if you want to understand or create a, this kind of application you have to understand the entire generative ai domain right this is what we are able to understand and then uh, we were able to understand that uh, this kind of a model uh, which are available these are some famous examples like this was the chat gpt which is uh, creating the code and this uh, this example was from the github copilot which is also helping to generate the code and to analyze the code and this is a uh, text i am providing it is able to generate the image so this is example of mid journey uh, which is a bot which is on the uh, server right uh, which is on this uh, red uh, red server or some other server it is available discord server sorry and then guys uh, we have a seen dali also which is able to generate the images right exactly the images uh, were based on this kind of a task right this kind of based on this kind of a text i am providing all right so everyone was well aware now we understood that whenever we trying to talk about this kind of application this all application are emerging for the one kind of a small uh, application or architecture which is a base architecture and that base architecture is something called as transformer right so so how the transformer so we'll try to understand what is transformer today all right so we'll try to start with understanding that uh, prior to this transformer all right how the things were working how the chat gpt actually works upon if you want to understand so we have to understand first the basic understanding of this entire transformer architecture so this is what we going to uncover today so what is this architecture and prior to that guys i will have to uh, try to make you understand that uh, before the transformer model uh, which was published in 2017 under the paper research paper which was produced by the google researchers 
so the name of the google researcher i don't remember as of now so that google team uh, when uh, and guys uh, let me tell you that the sole purpose the sole objective of creating this research paper or creating this kind of a transformer model was machine to machine level translation actually these guys were trying to solve the problem of machine to machine level translation that is a language translation model and uh, that is where they in invented this uh, transformer architecture and uh, the sole purpose when they in invented this uh, transformer architecture was to perform a machine level translation machine level translation let, uh, converting the uh, uh, converting the text from language 1 to converting it to the language 2 all right so means they were providing some text and they were generating some kind of a text and that was a translated text and that uh, time, uh, whatever the models were there initially, so that model were not able to perform uh, very well as respected to this kind of a task where we are trying to perform a machine level translation. That was the sole objective and keeping that objective in mind as they developed the entire transformer. And this transformer is the base which revolutionized, revolutionized the entire gendered VR industry. Right? So that's where the beginning happened. So nowadays, guys, uh, one year back only that uh, one year, uh, last one year, this open AI completed one year as right last one year it was launched this kind of application but this uh, initial starting was done in 2017 only for generating this kind of a stuff and that was the basic mark or benchmark which was set up by inventing this kind of a transformer model so guys before we understand the transformer model let's try to understand that how the text generation was done actually and what was the problem these guys were facing actually in the text generation and why it gave a birth to this kind of a model which is called as transform model which works on the concept of something called as attention something called as attention attention is all you need means we'll try to understand what is attention actually and why attention is needed why attention is needed okay why attention is needed and we'll try to understand why this uh, attention is needed here and because of the attention only we are able to understand the entire concept of the entire languages meaning right so let's imagine what was happening prior to that. So guys, uh, we have seen that uh, in the deep learning, we have a three kind of a neural network. One is ANN, one is convolution neural network, and the other one was recurrent neural network. And we have seen the entire working of the neural network. So what used to happen is whenever we have a sequential data processing like NLP related task, they used to use the uh, recurrent neural network, right? Recurrent neural network was used previously to generate the text generation. Now. What used to happen is recurrent neural network has a, this kind of architecture, right? So where you are inputting some kind of a text and it has something called as a feedback loop here, feedback loop. So when I'm on the heat will be connected to one weight out here. So whatever the output, previous output will be there. Oh, one I'm saying here. So here I'm passing some kind of an input out here and that input will get multiplied by some kind of a weight here. So W, uh, W0 I will say. And then guys, uh, here will be some kind of a recurrent neural network neurons will be there. And this will pass on through this when we, uh, my uh, X input I am passing here. And this will get uh, get here and uh, it is respect to the time T, right? So it is respect to the time because uh, what is going to happen is, so this feedback loop, it will again try to whatever the output, I'll say here output to generated, it will get back again into this recurrent neural network and it will try to take the next input, right? X2 with respect to Y. T1. So what was happening here is, so whatever sentences we are passing here, so out of the sentences, one one word was taken and it was processed through this recurrent neural network and they were able to generate the output. That output was again passed on uh, with the combination of the word number two. And then uh, whatever word one and two process together will be passed on to word three and four and so on. And that kind of a things or kind of a sequence they were trying to create, small sequence it was created. And by using the sequence guys, they were able to generate the text. Let's try to take the example. And a uh, very, very uh, next word when we are there trying to generate, at that time they were looking at a very few words, right? So whatever the sentences were, one one sentence was taken. That's why they're trying to refer to this word number one, two, three, four. And based on that, so if I have this kind of a four words here, so on the based on that, I will be able to generate a fifth word. That was the entire working. And when uh, we are trying to understand this machine learning, uh, uh, machine learning level translation work, so what kind of a difficulty they were facing? Let's try to take some example and it will be able to explain that what was the problem actually they were facing. Let's say, take this example that uh, they are saying that I took the money to, to the, okay, till here we have written a sentence and my now, now my job is to predict the next word, right? Predict the next word. 
and what the recurrent neural network was doing is it was trying to take i it was trying to take took it was trying to take my money to the bank this was getting processed in this kind of a recurrent neural network with the feedback loop and it was trying to create some kind of a sequencing out here but based on only this kind of a sentence or this kind of a sequence it was able to produce this next word okay so next word how it was uh, created based on the probability actually so this words uh, the next word could be a bank next word could be a river bank could be a financial bank so there will be some kind of a uh, fine tuning will be done and based on that so we will try to generate some kind of words based on the probability whatever the probability max will be there we'll try to understand like how this entire probability is also getting calculated in the chat gpt so this probability there were two approaches one was like a greedy approach and one was like a randomized sample approach that i am going to talk about so based on this approach guys whatever get the ranking as per the max probability that word will become a next word and that's how they are able to predict the words right so that was happening now what is what is the problem out here let's try to understand that we are trying to take the reference of this these words only which are like maximum four to five words and these words based on this meaning and their referencing we are trying to generate a next word right so here the entire chain of the thoughts or the entire the chain was very weak actually very weak the referencing was very weak actually so it could be something like that let's take the example that i am writing that uh, rohit sharma let's take this example rohit sharma uh, rohit sharma is a captain of india right captain of india and he is the first one so and then i am saying he is the first one he is the first one to triple centuries okay to hit the triple century in a match triple century in a match triple century so if this kind of example i am writing this so here let's try to understand rohit sharma is a captain of india okay captain of india this is what i said captain of india but uh, he is a captain that i understood but he, whether he is a captain of a cricket team or whether he is a captain of a football team or whether he is a captain of a hockey team or some baseball team we don't know actually right so if i want to perform an entire translation guys which consists of these many sentences or entire paragraph at that time what is happening i need to have a context with respect to the previous words previous sentences right and here the context was not getting generated or the chain of dots was not getting maintained because it is trying to refer to only few words some previous words and then it is generating the next sentence then generating the next word right so that was the problem they were facing because if you want to understand this rohit sharma guy you need to have a prior knowledge that he is a captain of india but what sport he is playing and the, if you try to look at the second sentence now he is the one now he is referring to a captain or he referring to a rohit sharma or he is referring to something else india we don't actually so we require if i am trying to perform or translate this word into entirely in the some local languages so i need to understand the context which will be starting from the beginning till the end right so i had need to have a very very strong understanding and that is why guys that is why they gave a birth to something called as attention actually so they understood that we need to have a attention and this transformer they are very good at the attention actually attention okay that is why their publishers they publish the name as a attention now you might be able to connect the dot that why they are calling this as attention the transform model because we need to have attention and transformer are very good at guys they are very good at attention and they can process the data parallelly they are very at a scale very efficiently they can scale efficiently means if, even if you are trying to process entire kind of a paragraph it will be able to understand the entire connection and then it will be able to generate the word i will going to explain how the text generation can be done with the uh, entire task for architecture and i will try to showcase you like if we we'll try to take one sentence i'll walk you through the entire steps and processes what is done in the architecture and by that we'll try to understand by taking that example of this machine translation only we'll try to understand the architecture then guys this was the example which was around which was called as homo homo synonyms homo synonyms means kind of a synonyms like uh, we have a similarity of the words and out of this similarity we try to pick up basis of the probability that what will be the one word and now here is the probability distribution also we have a some problem actually so that was not that great prediction which they were trying to do and that uh, second thing uh, second i already told you about the ambiguity syntactic ambiguity means let's try to take this example this is really a beautiful example guys and you can really relate to this one so you try to understand that uh, this sentence says that the teacher taught the student teacher taught the student with the book now the question is now the question is did the teacher teach with the book or was the student with the book now this book was uh, having association with the teacher 
or this book is having association with the student that is the main, main question right so means when i am trying to say that teacher taught the student with the book means teacher is having a book or student is having book exactly who was having book and who taught right who taught with the book or whether the student was having book and teacher taught or whether the teacher having a book and by looking at the reference at that book he taught to the student right that is what we have to understand that is called as ambiguity here Sy syntactic ambiguity and because of this guys the recurrent neural network not able to focus on so because of this difficulty they require something called as attention right so that is why they gave a birth to this transformer all right guys so i think now you guys are able to understand how the transformer came into the picture and what was the need of the r that they have to generate these kind of a things right so all right then guys nan uh, when i gave a uh, gave a concept to you guys that uh, this is something called as attention what do you mean by attention actually attention means guys what happen is the transformers guys uh, they they they, uh, they completely uh, out, uh, superseded entire or uh, their entire architecture like architecture like the bird right the bird architecture or lstm architecture okay so the pre, uh, bird is actually a transformer architecture only i will not say bird actually but they superseded the entire architecture which was like a recurrent neural networks rnns lstms and the gru networks created recurrent neural network okay unit so this kind of a model they superseded all the transformer they superseded the entire model in terms of the attention attention means we are trying to create a one kind of a connection between the sentences let's try to take what is attention actually attention means nothing but guys we are trying to give some kind of a weightage actually so what we trying to do is uh, that is why the attention could be a single attention could be a multi head attention a multi head attention this was the main concept multi head attention was the main concept because of was uh, they were able to create the entire attention and they were able to understand the entire languages understanding referencing entire chain of thoughts was created and they were successfully able to perform this kind of a trans uh, uh, task of the machine translation now try to understand what is attention actually attention means i am trying to create a relationship between the words actually because we seen that so whatever a sentence we took in the took in as an example the teacher taught the student with the book now we have to create a uh, we have to create a one kind of a relationship the teacher uh, the the book uh, the word with the teacher the book with the teacher and the other sentences whether whether there is a connection between the book between the teacher or there whether there is a connection between the book between the student or there is a connection between the taught teacher and the book okay so what we have to do is if you want to understand who taught whom with the book or uh, with a, without a book or student was having a book or teacher was having a book what i have to do there could be multiple connections so every word can have a connection with other so what they decided is that we try to create some kind of a attention weightages attention weightages and by creating attention weightages we will be able to understand or create a kind of a chain okay kind of association between the words and that if the association is strong means if i am trying to create this connection right? let's take this example so these thin lines guys thin lines are nothing but the kind of a weightage as we have seen this in artificial neural network diagram also so when i am trying to draw this kind of a diagram at that time this diagram this neurons or perceptron they are connected to each other by, by this kind of a thin lines and we have seen that these thin lines are nothing but a weightages these are the weights which are initially taken as random then uh, the entire model which was my wx plus b model which was able to understand the entire connection between these weights and biases and this is what our optimizer able to find out in the backward propagation this is what the neural networks learn right all these weights now here in the transformer architecture guys they are trying to learn something called as attention weights as well so what happened is whenever i am trying to per perform multiple sentences and then trying to translate them i need to create a some kind of a association between some couple of words with the other word right so that is why if you are able to see the black lines every word has an association with the other line but now out of that out of that if you are trying to see here teacher has a association with a book and the book has a association with the student and the book is also having a association with the teacher and also with a and this sentence uh, this words with a book is having a strong association now with the teacher so what does that mean now so the teacher word and the with word a word and book word if they have a strong association that means the attention is very strong means it could be possible that that most probably the book is has been associated with the teacher only not with the student all right so this way they try to create a entire connection between the words and by using this kind of a connection which are called as the weightages or especially the attention weight guys they are able to create a this kind of a entire chain and they were able to successfully transform 
the entire uh, language from one language to another language, whatever kind of a uh, task they want to do, achieve using this, right? So that is what is called as attention. Attention is nothing but we trying to pay attention to certain keywords and try to create one kind of association. Actually, in short, we can say we are trying to create an association that stronger the association, more the weightages, more the att attention weightages, stronger the connection or stronger the association, more the weightage and more the weightages. Most probably that that is how we trying to construe or try to understand the language. All right. So I think everyone understood what is attention and why they brought this attention. Attention has or something called as multi-head attention also because you have to create, I am going to talk about this multi-head attention, all right? So guys, before we actually uh, try to understand the transformer, I told you that uh, these transformers, they're trying to use one kind of uh, approaches which is called as sequence to sequence learning, okay? Something called as sequence to sequence learning. So we should first understand what is this sequence to sequence learning. I'll try to tell you what kind of a sequences are there, okay? And by using that sequence, we'll try to understand. There are popularly five types of sequences, actually. Five types of sequences. With the example, I will try to make it very simple to understand and make you understand, okay? What kind of a sequences is there? Because this sequence to sequence learning, sequence to sequence learning, this concept was taken care at along with the attention mechanism, along with the attention mechanism, by the transformer and by using this kind of a entire architecture guys they were able to successfully perform this machine level translation task because the initial objective of this transformer was or why they were invented back in 2017 and 16 was the entire sole purpose was to perform a machine level translation right converting from one language to another language the text right so guys before we proceed let's try to understand this what is this entire sequencing stuff all about right so just forgot about this one this sentence uh, as of now, just try to focus here. So let's imagine what kind of a relationship you have and why it is called as sequence to sequence learning. Okay. And this sequence to sequence learning is why it is important in the task like machine level translation task or kind of a generative way kind of a task. Right. So let's take the first example, example number one here, which is called as one to one relationship. One sequence to one means what? One to one. What is one to one? Let's try to take the example that uh, in the kind of a artificial neural network. Let's take the example in the kind of artificial neural network without recurrent neural network. We are taking simple neural network. Actually, I am trying to take some, some simple neural network and in the simple neural network, guys, I am trying to pass one kind of image. Actually, let's imagine I am trying to pass a face, face of a person. All right. So I know I, I am very bad at this drawing, but try to understand this is a face of face picture. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> guys. Uh, I'll give you this PPT. Don't worry. I'll try to share. Yeah, sir. Mr. Ja, sir. Yes, I'll share this PPT. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, guys, any questions, uh, any doubt as of now, you can simultaneously chat with me. Don't worry. I'll try to take some question as well. Okay. So thanks for asking. I'll share this PPT, guys. So let's take the example of the first relationship in the sequence to sequence modeling, guys. And sequence to sequence modeling is very important. It's a basic approach, a backbone of the entire transformer along with the attention mechanism. I told you what is attention. And why attention is required? You've seen the uh, uh, syntactic ambiguity and the uh, semantic search, which is called upon the similarity of the words. And based on the similarity words, we are trying to perform a probability distribution. And then we are trying to generate the entire text, right? To predict the next word. That was the problem with the recurrent neural network. And they gave a birth something called a sequence to sequence learning. And sequence to sequence learning, try to understand what are the different approaches, these five models or five approaches. First is called one to one. Means what? Let's take the example that I'm trying to build one neural network and neural network. I'm passing my face image actually. Face image I'm passing and this face image is getting uh, passed on here and then it is able to generate output. What the output is it generating guys? It is trying to perform a classification task actually. It is trying to perform a classification task and it is able to generate the output that uh, whether this person, whatever the face is passed, uh, passed upon here, whether he's a Vikas or not whether this is a Vikas or no. Okay. So this is the classification he is trying to perform. So what is happening? I'm passing one picture. I'm getting only one uh, output. So that is called as one to one, one to one sequencing, right? So sequence also, what is happening? I'm passing one input. I'm generating one output. So I'm passing image. I'm taking neural network. I'm trying to perform a classification task. Either I can generate whether this is a Vikas or not. I can detect the face of Vikas and uh, I can detect this kind of a bounding box around it. And you can say it is Vikas. Okay. And with the some confidence interval. So this could be one example where we can say the relationship is one to one. 
now second now everyone clear what is one to one relationship i am passing one input and uh, based on the input either i am doing a classification whether that guy is vikas or not vikas or i am trying to detect that face that face has been detected here and i am trying to generate a label out here right like uh, we have seen an object detection with the yolo so i am trying to generate a label like this is a vikas and i am trying to perform this kind of a confidence score as well so 0.8% with a 0.8% i can say this is a vikas right on live on a web camera you are able to detect my face so this kind of example then second example which talk about that i am passing one kind of input and but i am trying to generate a multiple output so what could be the example let's take the example that i am passing the image now again let's imagine i am passing an image of a guy okay so let's draw the guy funny guy like me okay so i am passing one image guys uh, this is a face of a guy uh, and now this guy is standing out here all right and he is trying to play guitar out here let's imagine this is a guitar i know this is a very bad picture so let's imagine this way that this guy vikas funny guy vicky okay so he's trying to play guitar this is a picture i'm passing guys once i am able to pass now what is my input input is single image input is single image but now as a output i am trying to generate a captions i am trying to generate a captions for this image okay caption generation so this is the task which has been done in the sequence to sequence you pass a image it will be able to generate a text or captions or label around it like the person uh, it will try to generate an entire sequence like this one or it will try to generate in that text guys so the way they are saying that uh, the guy what is there actually in the picture so i pass a picture i will be able to generate a text that what is there in the picture so the guy the guy or maybe it is able to detect my face the guy funny guy vikas is playing a guitar is playing a guitar right so this is what the entire sentences it has generated guys so uh, what is my output output is many actually so output it has generated many words many words it has generated but my input is one one single that is the image i have passed in so for this image guide it has created a captions actually so what caption it has created the guy funny guy vikas is playing a guitar right this is what there in the picture so this kind of a sequencing is called as one to many all right one to many then guys many to many what is the what is the task of many to many let's try to understand many to many means what let's take the example that i am passing okay here i am passing something let's imagine my task is to perform a emotion analysis my task is performing a emotion analysis all right so in emotion analysis what i am trying to do is i am i went to a twitter i went to twitter and i scrapped the entire tweets scrape the entire tweets and let's imagine i have scraped 10000 tweets now what is my job is uh, like uh, let's imagine this way so i have taken one webinar uh, regarding the generative ai session i want to understand whether people liked this gen, uh, webinar or not so for that reason what i did is like i made it uh, youtube live i made it live on everyone facebook everyone and people there is a group out here so which are tweeting about me or uh, they are trying to pass a comment so i have created such comments i have taken these comments now i want to understand what is the entire emotion of the people around me right so whether people are happy people are happy with the uh, entire thing or whether people are uh, neutral okay or whether people are uh, feeling sad like uh, they did not like it or people are a mixture of the feeling like mixture happy with sad could be possible right emotions are complex anything is possible so what is happening i am taking multiple inputs what are what are my multiple input tweets the sentences as the sentences comprises of the multiple words hundreds of words thousands of words and then i am passing here i am generating guys one i am generating one kind of a label what kind of a label i am generating so uh, sorry sorry not second one actually the third one right so i am passing the multiple i am passing the multiple labels here and i am trying to sorry i am passing multiple tweets here and i am trying to uh, create a multiple labels out here multiple labels with emotion analysis right emotion analysis whether people are happy not happy with the performance or people are have a mixture of the feeling or feel people are feeling sad about it right so that kind of a things is called as guys many to many many to many third relationship right many to many all right guys in many to many guys in many to many there is also something called as all right so did i speak about many to many right many to many is like i am trying to pass the entire tweets and able to create a different kind of a sentences right so that is called as menu to menu not menu to menu actually we are talking about this one right this one third one many to one so many to one could be guys i am trying to create a multiple tweets 
and I am trying to generate whether people liked it or not liked it. Single kind of a label. Or if I provide a multiple label, it will become many to many. Or what could be the good example, guys? Now I am trying to focus here. Many to many relationship. Now we have seen one to one, one to many, uh, then one to many. From many to one also we have seen. Like uh, we are passing multiple comments. We are getting trying to understand whether people liked it or not liked it. Or let's take the example now many to many. Actually in many to many, guys, there are two types of relationship actually exist in the many to many. One is called as synchronized, synchronized, synchronized menu to many. And one is called as guys, this one is called as unsynchronized, unsynchronized. Okay. Just forgive what my handwriting is doing. One is called as synchronized guys. One is called as unsynchronized. Let's try to understand the relationship we are trying to look at here is menu to many. So one is called as unsynchronized, a synchronized, and one is called as synchronized. I'll say yes. I'll say asynchronized okay what is asynchronized what is synchronized let's take the example okay let's take the example so very very good example could be that uh, same way guys i am trying to pass like what is the example that i am trying to pass one language here one kind of a sentence is here i am trying to pass the sentences here and the sentences are in english sentences are in english okay so these sentences will be many there will be consist of the many words many words and these sentences are in English. Now what I am trying to do is there input is many, many to many relationship input is many. So I am passing many multiple sentences, multiple words that are in English. Now I am trying to translate them. I am trying to translate them. Okay. So translate them into the German or French or any other languages. Okay. German, French or could be Arabic, could be Japanese possible. Right. So now guys, let's try to understand. This is very simple logic that uh, as per the rule of the grammar, like uh, what is happening is, so if I'm passing three sentences, let's say, I love machine learning, machine learning very much, very much, right? So how many words I'm passing? One, two, three, four, and five. So five words I'm passing here as an input, okay, here. So this is our main heading, many to many. Here is called as asynchronized and this is called as synchronized. In asynchronized, guys, what example I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you the example of the machine level translation. In machine level translation, I'm writing some sentence, which is I love machine learning very much. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, maybe six words I'm passing. Now what is happening is if I'm trying to uh, perform that translation in the German, okay? If I'm trying to perform this translation in German, so I pass the six words and in the German guys, it let's imagine it converted to this way. Ish, Liebe, machine learning. Uh, ish, Liebe, Liebe means very much, love, very much love. Ish, uh, let's say what, what we call, uh, called as uh, many, many will be called as guns, actually, guns. Guns is the word for many. Ish, guns, Liebe, machine learning. So now how many sentences, uh, words it has created? Four actually. But I passed here six. So this is not synchronized. Whatever word I passed, that not exactly that many words are created as output. So that is called as asynchronized many to many relationship. Asynchronized. Uh, whatever the input length I am passing might not be the same output length I will be getting. The length will be varying. Length will be varying. Okay. So that is what is called as a uh, many to many relationship with asynchronized. Asynchronized approach. And then guys, synchronized approach means let's take the example that I am passing a video. Okay, let me rub these things now. So guys, any doubts, please ask me if I have created any confusion or if you are feeling that you are not able to understand at any point of time, what is the sequencing I am trying to talk about. I'll try to repeat or try to explain you once again. So please give me a confirmation that you are able to follow or you have any doubts, question, please let me know accordingly. All right. So it is very important concept guys that what we trying to understand here. So I'm passing here in many to many guys. I pass exactly the input sentences. Let's imagine I'm passing here the four, uh, six sentences or six words, and I am exactly able to get only four out of that. And I'm trying to perform a translation from one language to another. So this is called as a synchronized approach, but let's take the synchronized approach, many to many. So whatever input I'm passing is, whatever input I'm passing, I'm able to get exactly that many outputs, that many outputs, the output length and the input length will be exactly same. The length will be exactly same. Okay. It's the same length. So that is called as synchronized approach. Synchronized. Approach. What is the example? Let's take this way. Okay. So let's take the example that I am passing one kind of a video out here. I am passing one video. Okay. 
I'm passing a video that students are walking in the colleges and this kind of a one minute of video I'm passing here and their people are like uh, chit chatting with each other and they are passing here and they are trying to enter into the classrooms. Okay, this is kind of a video I'm passing. Now, when I'm passing video, what will happen guys? Whatever the video I'm passing for one minute, let's imagine that one minute video will get converted into the frames, right? So you guys already know that whenever we pass the images, uh, sorry, videos, it will get converted into frames. Frames are nothing but the kind of a images, right? So let's imagine it has converted them into kind of a 20 image uh, frames. Those are called as frames. Now guys, for these 20 frames now, for each frame, I'm, gen I'm generating a caption. I'm generating a caption. How many caption I will be able to generate? One caption per, per frame. One caption per frame. So I will be able to generate a 20 captions. So I passed on here video, which was one minute uh, long duration, which created in terms the 20 frames and for 20 frames, I am generating the 20 captions. So that is called as minute to minute relationship with the synchronization with sync. Okay. With sync. Sync means whatever input length I am passing, same output length I am getting as. All right. So that is the sequencing part we are trying to understand that concept has been brought upon and by using this concept get the transformer is enabled to generate the things and it is like mostly the many to many relationship it is trying to perform here many to many relationship this approach has been adopted all right now all right i think uh, everyone is able to understand so what is the sequencing part here guys the sequencing part is very very important concept to understand the transformer so transformer are using synchronized or unsynchronized approach many to many relationship right Once they are able to use this approach, then next approach will be the attention because we have seen that when I'm trying to translate this kind of a thing, so I require a multiple attentions, multiple relationship with the sentences, and then it will be able to perform the task. All right. So everyone is aware like uh, what happens, what is the embedding layer, right? So when I'm, I'm uh, let me have a quick review. Uh, let me tell you in shortcut, like in one minute, uh, what is this embedding layer actually works upon? So we already know guide in LLP like uh, we cannot we have a text data and this text data has to be converted to the numbers right to the numbers then only I can feed it to my model let it be any kind of a model right this is my main job actually and for the reason I have to create something called as word to vector a concept called as word to vector and this word to vector uh, concepts is uses something called as word vectorization word vectorization method which is a bag of word model back of word model or second uh, it can use something called as tf ideas tf ideas right so but uh, what is happening here is guys when i am trying to perform this kind of an entire representation into the vector let's imagine what i have to do is i have to understand the limit of my vectors like how size which size or dictionary size you call as so let's imagine if i am calling my dictionary size as a thousand words thousand limit i am trying to put as a thousand what will happen is Every word or every sentences or text which I am taking, it will be broken down into the words and that words will be trying to create a kind of a numerical representation in terms of the numbers, right? In numbers, unless imagine if I am trying to take a vector size of 1000, so whatever word will be there, that word will be created using a one kind of a vector representation, which will be 1000 dimensions long and everywhere it will be like 0, 0, 0. But at one position, let's imagine it will be 1. And this kind of a uh, uh, sparse matrix, it will be able to create sparse matrix, which consists of the more number of zeros, one, one, uh, one hot encoding, you can say, simply one hot encoding, it is trying to perform one hot encoding, right? And by using one hot encoding, guys, it is trying to convert this entire word. Let's take the word like I like you, uh, that like will be created using this kind of encoding and maybe like is saved at a position of, let's say, 100. So at 100 position, there will be one all will be zeros up to 1000. Now what was happening is at that time, uh, this 1000 was a very, very big number and this was a very high dimension. So people decided that they can reduce this dimension further without changing the context and they can represent these words with a unique number as well. And that is why they gave a birth something called as word embedding using the Keras layer and this word embedding, they created something called as feature vectorization. Feature vectorization, right? So if you guys are already aware, then well and good. But who's are not aware, I'm trying to tell you what is feature vectorization. So in feature vectorization, what I'm trying to perform is I'm trying to take some kind of a features out here. So what kind of a features I'll be taking? Let's imagine here. So I am trying to write my features as human being, human living thing. Okay. Then uh, let's imagine I'm trying to take the food. Then I'm trying to take the royal category. Okay. 
then i am trying to take uh, let's imagine only, uh, as of now i have taken only three categories okay and then i want to convert these words whatever words will be there i try to take them into the rows now guys what will happen is now if i am trying to take this kind of a feature like human being food royal or let's say kind of a category like a feline category right feline feline category feline category means whether it is animal or which kind of animal it is canine feline or some other animal mammals are all right so if i am trying to take this kind of a features as as my columns guys and then by using this kind of a features i am trying to convert my words what is the word let's say man so man whether it is belong to human uh, human being yes so i am giving positive score whether man can eat a food yes i am giving positive score 0.8 i am giving 0.6 whether man can belong to a royal category yes i am giving 0.9 score whether man can belong to a feline category no feline category means only category which has a something called as cats this kind of animals cat like animals right so whether it belong no so i am giving minus score minus 0.7 all right so same way guys i am trying to convert my woman uh, woman send uh, this word into the this kind of a feature representation and this way guys so whether again the same thing uh, the woman will be belonging to human category can it will be able to eat a food whether it can be a royal or feline category right? based on that you can see here i am trying to create a matrices of the word and by using this what is happening guys whatever the 1000 category was there that has been now reduced this this dimension has been now reduced to only simple dimension let's say here if i am taking 20 features here so that features will be getting reduced from 1000 to 20 and i will be able to generate this kind of a embedding right so this is called as word embedding and by creating this word embedding as what are the beauty that if you are trying to perform a semantic search so the embedding of the man and the woman will look very similar and the king and queen similar word will look very similar and they will be able to see that the distance between when we try to plot this kind of a entire matrix is here on the x and y axis the man and woman dis distance between this matrix and the king and queen matrices are very less so means this similar word will have a place at a less distances right so that is the beauty that i am able to perform an entire reduction of the dimension that is called as now the fur further uh, advanced word embedding layer right word embedding layer so this word embedding guys it is very used in the transformer architecture rather than simply converting the text to the numerical encoding so that is called as word to vector representation so it was not the simple vector so it was trying to perform an embedding layer actually word embedding okay so i'll try to understand this one hope you guys are able to follow that why we are trying to look at this concept right so now uh, if you want to take the simple example like how the entire uh, normal lstm ne neural network works upon so what they were uh, trying to do is that uh, they are trying to let's take this example very simple example that if i am trying to showcase that uh, how uh, how we can implement this kind of a normal sequencing uh, information right i have taken one good example here so what we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying to take one kind of a, a neural network let it be a kind of a lstm network could it be a gru network or simple rn network so if i am trying to uh, bring this neural network which is called as an lstm so i have to call this way right i have to call the layers uh, keras dot layer that lstm then i have to pass my units i have to pass my activation function my uh, 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 activation function then what is my recurrent activation and some other parameters i will be passing like how how, how much optimizer want had kind of optimizer want how many units add what right this kind of a layers i have to add right and by adding the layer and by creating the output dimension i'll be able to perform a task let's imagine i want to uh, create a task of movie sentiment analysis right so for that purpose what i'll be doing what i'll be doing if i want to perform a sequence classification right sequence to sequence example i'm trying to showcase you and then i'll try to showcase you that in the sequence to sequence normal example how it is different from the transformer example okay so here also we are trying to generate a text actually so what text i am trying to generate i am trying to generate a sentiment text right whether it is a positive or negative that kind of a text i am trying to generate and for that reason like i shown you it is like a many to one classification but in the uh, transformer we are using many to many relationship right so in uh, one uh, in many to one relationship which we are trying to follow here here so if i want to build a some kind of a categorization uh, kind of a sentiment kind of a uh, use case where i am trying to take the movie uh, reviews data and i am trying to build a classifier flyer whether whether what kind of a sentiments will be it will be whether it is a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment right one kind of a label i am trying to place and how i can generate this is i have to uh, write my top words whatever data will be there so i will be uh, importing that data and try to load here before uh, that you guys already know we have seen multiple times that we'll be using something or less from the keras sequential model so you can import from the layers lstm layer because i am going to use lstm model here so lstm layer sequential model and then i'll be uh, importing my embedding just which we spoke about right and once i am able to import that guys i have to mention my top word size 5000 let's imagine 
then i have to uh, write how many maximum sentence length i have to take and then i will be loading my data by using this right load data whatever the comment data i am taking and i am trying to split my data x and y x train y train right so first i split my data then what i can do is whatever data i have splitted here right so whatever data i have splitted here i have to convert that to the embedding layer so for creating that embedding layer first i have to make them a fixed length so what is the fixed length i am talking here is make them have 500 sentence length so for that purpose i have to add a padding sequence padding sequence means some sentences like i like the movie let me tell you a simple example i like the movie right so someone uh, say the movie was okay movie was okay so what is happening when people are writing comment every uh, sentence has a different range here is a three here is a four could be five or ten so what happens is whenever we have a different varying sentences we try to make them a same length try to make them a same length that's the reason we are adding this padding sequence layer here so padding sequence what it will try to do is get so whatever sentence i have written here like i like the movie i like the movie and the second one says the movie was okay movie was okay now what is happening here so it has a three words it has a four uh, words now if i want to make them a fixed 10 what i have to do is i have to add zeros here so until unless i reach to the count of 10 that job is done here that job is performed here so when i'm trying to take the data and split the data into train and testing guys then what i'm trying to do is whatever the text data i've taken i'm trying to convert them into the position encoding or kind of a vectors and that vectors whatever i am creating that vectors number weight vector i'm trying to make them in the similar lengths by using the zeros zeros can be added after the sentence or previous to the sentences also so that is called as a padding layer padding layer so pad sequence we are trying to perform here right so that is what i have done i have taken the data i have split the data before that i have inputted my model and layers and i'm trying to make them in the same sentence and it will get converted to the 5000 vectors all right so once i am able to convert them into the 5000 vector guys then what I am saying that perform an embedding now out of that vector. Okay. So what happened is previously, whatever the text data was taken, it was converted into 5,000 vector, right? So that is the uh, length we have written here, right? Try to understand what is happening here. I have created first 5,000 vector length here. 5,000. So whatever the text I passed upon, I created a vector out here for the 5,000 length. And then I tried to make them a padding sequence by using padding sequences all the sentences which were the sentences i passed on here i try to fix their lengths so i try to make them a fixed length sentences fixed length right so this is the job i have uh, till now done and i imported my data and split it here right so after that guys what i'm trying to do like i told you this embedding layer so the embedding layer says the size equal to 30 means so whatever the 5000 vectors were there 5000 sizes vector this 5000 vectors will be created into this kind of a feature representation right which we've seen here so it was the features here, it was the words here. So it will be able to convert them into the 32 feature range. So my dimension will come down from 5000 to 32. This is what I have to perform by using embedding layer, right? So try to understand here. So I'm calling my sequential model. So then saying model dot add embedding layer. So whatever the embedding was, uh, whatever the vectorization was done, that vectorization length I've taken here. And then after that vectorization length, guys, I've taken a top word. Top word means how many 5000 words I've taken here. So 5,000 vectors were taken and that I'm trying to convert here to the length of 32. Okay. So I'm adding that embedding layer here and by converting this 5,000 into 22 and I'm writing here, what is the maximum uh, length sentences I'm trying to make them, right? So once I write that guess, uh, then it will be able to generate a dimension, uh, which will be less dimension as compared to the previous dimension. Then what I'm trying to do is I'm calling, uh, this is my model actually sequential. Then I added my layer here, embedding layer which will be able to convert the bigger vector into the smaller vector. Then I'm calling my LSTM layer here, which consists of the 100 neurons here, right? LSTM in the bracket 100. And then guys, I'm adding my last, last uh, here layer, which is called as dense layer, which has a only one neuron here, one neuron. So what architecture I've created here? Let's try to understand. So first I've taken here sequential model. In the sequential model, let's uh, call this as a sequential model, S model, okay? So for this sequential model, guys, what I have done is I have added something called as embedding layer here. Embedding layer, then in the, in the embedding layer, it will be able to convert them into the 32 dimensions, whatever the 5000 dimensions were there. So entire text will get converted to 32 dimension with the numerical, numerical dimensions only like this one. And then guys, I have added here what is called as my dense, uh, what is called as my LSTM layer. 
LSTM layer which consists of the 200, uh, sorry, 100 neurons. And then I uh, created my dense layer which consists of only one neuron here but because it will be able to give me output. Okay, this kind of architecture I have created is three line of code I have written here. Then guys, I am writing this last line, compile. I'm passing my binary cross entropy as my loss function, optimizer as Adam and accuracy matrix. And that's it. I'm trying to print a model. So model summary will be this way. Then guys, I'll try to fit my model, model dot fit. I'm passing my train data and it will be able to generate an entire evolution, right? So what it will try to generate, let's try to understand here. So this is what we have created. We passed our sentences that get converted to 32 dimension. Then from by using word embedding, first we created into the word to vector, which, which was around 5,000 vector. 5000 long that will get converted by using this embedding layer to the 32 dimension that 32 dimension went into the LSTM model which consists of the 100 uh, neurons and after that 100 neurons processing it went to one more last neuron which will be able to give a prediction here 0 or 1 so 0 for the negative 1 for the positive right so this was the architecture which was happening we are passing now here menu and we are trying to create a 1 all right so you guys are able to understand the entire thing, right? How it is created in our movie sentiment here. We have seen the entire movie sentiment analysis using the LSTM neural network. Now guys, what is the transform now? Or whatever the text we are passed the text, we have generated the text. Text was only one, many to one relationship. Now, if you want to understand the architecture of the transformer, how it looks like, okay? What is the actual transformer architecture now? Let's try to concentrate here. Guys, uh, any questions, anything as of now? If you have any questions, any doubts, like uh, what was the entire thing we would discuss? What is the sequence to sequence modeling? Why I took that example? Please let me know if you have a questions or give me confirmation. We can go ahead then. Okay. Few more, uh, couple of more people, if you are able to understand or if you have any doubts, anything guys, before I try to deep dive into this kind of architecture, transform architecture, please let me know. Give me, uh, go ahead and please give me confirmation guys. If you want to ask anything, please let me know when I you. Alright guys, thanks for the confirmation. Alright, so Aisha ma'am, thank you. Uh, ja sir, Mr. Ja, thank you. So guys, what is the transformer look like? Okay, alright. So uh, uh, all of a sudden you guys were uh, really quiet. So that I felt that you, either you are able to follow everything or you are not able to understand quite, quite a few things, right? So that's the concern I had. That's why I asked you. So alright, I think everyone is on the same page. I got a couple of confirmation. Now try to look at the transformer architecture, how the transformer look like. Okay. So let's try to understand where the thing starts here. This is the diagram, how the transformer look like. So first we'll be passing an input here. Input, which will get into the tokenizer, uh, which will get converted into tokenizer. What is tokenizer? Tokenizer is guys, uh, nothing but it's a numerical representation. Okay, it's a, that I'm trying to take the text and convert them into the number. So that is tokenizer. This is a step one. Step one, here it is started. Okay, this is input guys here, actually input and it is trying to convert into the tokenizer tokenizer means it is trying to convert into the numbers all right then what will happen step two guys then step two okay guys shiva sir thank you okay thanks thanks for the confirmation dilip sir thank you uh thanks for the confirmation guys you guys are really generous thank you very much for your support okay guys let's try to have a look at the architecture now i by using the architecture uh we'll try to understand how this transformer is able to generate a text we have seen now uh, the sequence model, LSTM model, how it is trying to generate the text. We are passing the text, how it is able to generate the text and what was the architecture. Now, let's compare this architecture with the transformer architecture and let's try to understand one one thing each. That what these things mean and how it is able to generate a text, right? What is the transformer architecture? Now, I am passing this input. Input could be my sentences here. So, I am pa passing these sentences, guys, out here. So, what, what is the job I am trying to uh, uh, create here is now uh, my job is different. Now I'm not trying to perform anything uh, here. I'm not trying to perform any kind of a sentiment. Now my job is this one. This my job is many to many. Many to many sequence I am doing here. And many to many sequence that is a, a synchronized sequence I am trying to create here. A synchronized sequence because whatever the uh, uh, length of the sentences I'll be passing, a length or the kind of a words I'll be passing, that will not match guys. That will not match with the output length. Okay, output length. So this is what is called as asynchronous many to many relationship. I'm trying to perform a solo case. Now, what could be the example? Can anyone quickly give me an example? Asynchronous many to many relationship. What could be the use case? Any any use case which you can guys give me quickly. Let's try to check your knowledge, whether we are on the same page or not. 
Yeah, guys, my question is, uh, can you anyone give me the example for the relationship in sequence to sequence, many to many? Many to many with the asynchronized thing. Many to many asynchronized sequences. Asynchronized means input length and output length will not be same. So what, can anyone give me any example of such task? What could be such task? Okay, so we'll try to solve, uh, so we'll try to solve here. A synchronized task, let's understand. Okay, translation of text to another language. Awesome, awesome. Yes, correct. Translation from one language to another could be possible, right? Or you can say that uh, I'm trying to create a, one kind of a tagging, name entity uh, tagging. At that time, I'm passing by words and I'll try to get a only couple of tags out there, right? So tagging, any kind of a tagging. So could be many to many relationship or synchronized because input length and output length will not match. All right. So let's try to understand. I'm trying to perform a machine level translation here. So whatever the sentence I will be passing, it will get converted to the different language, right? This is the task I'm going to perform here. And this is the architecture look like. Let's try to understand where the thing starts. What is the step number one? What will be the step? Step will be like here, we'll be having an input. Input will be my text data. I'll passing my text data here. So that text data, guys, it will get converted. Uh, the step two will be tokenization. We'll speak about in detail. I'll take a one example and try to speak about detail. Tokenizer, step two will be tokenizer. Tokenizer, what will happen is tokenizer means whatever the text is here that will get converted into the number encoding. So you can say a word to vector thing, word to vec. And then guys, one city say perform word to vec. Now, what is the next step it will try to do is because whenever I'm trying to convert this text from number by using word to vec techniques, okay, word to vec techniques, my initial dimension will be very high. Like let's uh, be seen here example. So my initial dimension were 5,000. So by using word to vec, I created a 5000 dimension. That is the reason you can see here. That is the reason you can see here that they have something called as embedding layer here. Embedding. Okay. So now try to look at it. That main architecture of the transformer. Okay. Let me draw with a different color now. So main architecture of the transformer guys, they have a two part here. One is encoder. One is decoder. So this is main, main part is one part, the encoder. Second part is decoder here. Okay. So this uh, two tire architecture is there. Actually, this two tire architecture is the main backbone of this transformer. And there will be something called as you can see here, multi-head attention here. So that is very important concept here. Multi-head attention means what is happening here is you see near that multi-head attention means what? We are trying to create a weightages. We are trying to create a relationship association. We are trying to create an association between the words, right? So between the words, we are trying to create an association because we have seen the association is the most important thing. By creating this kind of association between the words to words, that association could be a single association. Single association, sorry, let me write it in better way. Uh, attention, uh, the in, uh, entire thing will be kind, kind of a single association or association could be multiple association. So single word can have an association with the multiple words. So here, what we're trying to do is, if the association is multiple, it is called as multi-head attention, multi-head self-attention, okay? So clear now what is multi-head self attention means we are trying to take the words. Let's imagine word one and I'm trying to create a relationship for word two, word three, word four, multiple relationship with this one. So, and then by creating this kind of a weightages, actually, these are nothing but the weights. I'm trying to create a one weightages here by creating a connection and that weight will be assigned to this words combination. And that based on the value of the weights, whether there are heavier weights, where are lighter weights, it will try to create a attention, attention, okay? So that multiple headed attention means multiple kind of attention I'm trying to create. That is what it is called as multi-head attention, okay? So the main concept is encoder, decoder, and this by encoder or decoder, it will try to perform the same thing. And here something called as multi-head attention means if whatever the input we are passing, that will get converted and try to create a relationship between them. And that relationship will not be single, multiple relationship, right? So that is why we're trying to perform this many to many relationship, right? Here with the synchronization, right? So we started here input. The second part will be the tokenizer, which I'm trying to convert my text to number. And once I convert my text to number, what I am having is problem is 5,000 dimension. That 5,000 dimension will be reduced. Maybe it is getting converted to something called as 30 to 50 dimension by using a word embedding. So they have a word embedding here. Now try to understand what is happening. When I pass my input, guys, it is getting tokenized. Once it is tokenized, I'm passing to the embedding. Embedding, what it will do, it will try to take this 5,000 and it will try to further convert them into the smaller dimension. Let's say could be a 30 dimension, 30 dimension. Then once it is trying to perform a 30 dimension, guys, there is something called as positional encoding. What is positional encoding? It is kind of a vector only. It is kind of a vector, but it vector now try to represent the position of the word because 
why it is important try to understand if i am saying that i i am vikas okay and i learn data science and generative ai from xlr okay now guys if i want to translate this sentence now why position is important now like, try to understand if i am trying to encode something and whatever the things numbers uh, whatever text i am created here and then i convert it to the number anyone i have further created that a uh, number to the lower dimension using word embedding that was you guys were able to understand how we have created that feature embedding and we were able to convert that feature in using feature embedding into the lower dimension so here it was actually 5000 and we were able to create into the something called as 30 to 50 dimension right now guys why they are creating position uh, positional encoding try to understand what is positional encoding positional encoding means they are trying to create one kind of a vector actually one kind of a vector which is trying to retain the position of the words actually retain the position of the word that is called as position encoding that is the step here fourth step which will be happening once we pass the input tokenization embedding then it will try to create a position embedding what is this position embedding guys this means it is trying to create one kind of a vector out here which will be able to create a indexes here so it will try to index and try to store the words by index by index why it is important let's try to understand rather than taking the like what will happen here it will be zero index it will be one index i am vikas will be at a two index and then the further so on right so it, this will be at let's say 20 index rather than keeping this uh, word xlr so if i try to take this word swap this word with the second index what will happen i am xlr so what will happen i am xlr i am i have learned data science and generative way from vikas so understood what is happen so when you try to uh, convert it to the different language let's imagine you are trying to convert this to the german if you try to retain the position it is okay if you try to swap the position what will happen entire meaning will get changed entire meaning. even though you have created a relationship between the entire uh, words right so you are created attention but if you swap the position guys if you swap the position entire meaning will change right this is simple example i have taken so the take the example that teacher was teaching the student with the book right so with the book and instead of that book uh, position you created with the book was trying to teach uh, book was trying to teach to the um, stu uh, student and the teacher right or book was trying to teach with the teacher to student so what is what is happening here entire meaning is getting changed when i am trying to swap the words position right so that the reason they are trying to maintain something called as positional encoding so you can see here the positional encoding is created this black dots and then guys then it will be passed to encoder and decoder now what is this encoder decoder let's try to understand encoder and decoder nothing but they are kind of a stacked layers here there will be a stack layer so that stack layer will be something called as lstm kind of a model lstm kind of a model or could be a gru kind of a model or could be a some model which is very complex layers very complex layer of advanced layers of the recurrent neural network and that layers will be there here so here also and here is in the decoder also so there will be a complex layers of this layers will be there and within that there there will be different neurons which will be available for the lstm and gru networks okay so this encoder or decoder represent of that and then guys when i am trying to pass encoder decoder you already know that they are trying to take this in, uh, entire thing and they will be trying uh, trying to have this kind of an lstm network or could could be a gru network so lstm let me write it here lstm and kind of a gru network guys and then what will happen is guys now how the flow started here so first is input then tokenizer tokenizer means converting number after converting to number it is embedding embedding it is trying to retain the position so it is trying to create positional encoding one one kind of a vector which can create a indexes for the length of the sentences or the order of the sentence words order of the words okay so that is positional encoding then along with the positional encoding guys it will be passed on to this layer this is the backbone of this which is called as encoder now encoder will try to process the information they will try to have a self attention they will try to create now what they will try to do they will try to process the self attention layers and they will try to pass it to the feed forward network try to understand what is there in the encoder encoder consists of the two architecture here within the encoder guys there will be something called as my lstm layer let's call this my lstm layers this lstm layer will have a different neurons so this will be my lstm layer okay and after that lstm layer guys there will be a normal artificial neural network so this this kind of a neural network will be there so this is this neural network will have a connection here 
So one one model will be LSTM, which is the advanced level, and then there will be normal artificial neural network. Artificial neural network will be there. So what will happen is here. So we we try to pass this positional encoding, whatever text were there. That text will get processed here. They try to create a, a attentions, attention and attention weights will be created. Okay. So here they will try to create a attention weights. Let me write this as an attention weights. Okay, attention W. This attention weight and the embedding will be created, guys. And then will be it will be passed on further. It will be passed on further to artificial neural network. Artificial neural network. And then, guys, it will try to create. Uh, then it will try to create some kind of a hidden state, hidden state. And then out of that, guys, yeah, guys, uh, you get attendance. Okay, don't worry. And like five to seven minutes, you will get attendance. Don't worry. So, guys, what will happen here? Encoder it will consist of the two layers now. One layer will be from the LSTM layer, or could be a GRU layer. Okay. And then plus there will be artificial neural network, artificial neural network, and the entire information will get processed, and there will try to create one hidden state. That hidden state will be passed on now decoder, guys. Okay. Now to the decoder. Now simultaneously, what is happening when we are trying to process this information? Simultaneously, where I started here, okay. When I started here with the input, guys. When I started here with the input, okay. Let me rub these things actually, and let it, let us write it here. So this is my step one here. I'll take an example, guys. I'll take an example and explain you also, and I will make a one code walkthrough also for this transformer. Let's try to understand. The starting point will be input here. Input, okay. St step one input. This is my step two in tokenizer means converting to the numbers. Let me write it here numbers. Convert it to the numbers. Then this is my step three, guys. Step three will be embedding, okay. Embedding means whatever the number I have created, I will write a number as 5000. So that 5000 number will get converted to, let's say, 30 to 50 numbers. This kind of a vector will be created. Then guys, I am trying to create one more vector here. The fourth part will be uh, my positional encoding. Positional encoding means I am trying to create a one more vectorization here. So I am trying to retain an indexes for the words and their orders. Okay. Then guys, it, the uh, fifth step, the fifth step will be encoder. What is my encoder now? Actually, this encoder, okay, it consists of the LSTM or let me write it with the black color now. So this consists of the LSTM layer. This will be a LSTM layer or GRU layers. Okay. Same here, LSTM layer. LSTM layer or a GRU layers. Okay. GRU layers at the step 5. And plus, plus, plus that there will be an artificial neural network. Artificial neural network, which will be called as feed forward network here. Feed forward neural network. Okay. Feed forward. That's why it is called as feed forward forward connection you can say forward connection actually fc they are saying fc feed forward connection okay feed forward forward connection feed forward network that is what is called as the same here there will be in decoder as well there will be artificial neural network and which will be called as feed forward network feed forward okay feed forward fc feed con forward connection feed forward network okay forward connection so what is happening here guys let's try to understand here so when i pass the input uh, step one step two tokenization step three embedding step four uh positional encoding then it will try to process through these layers the this layers consist of the two architecture one is lstm layer so let me draw here then uh, for both of them it will be same guys but now process what is happening this is my step five now at the step five my entire information is getting processed here and which consists of this kind of a layering here so first we will have a lstm layers here LSTM layers, you guys already know that it is kind of a feedback loop also, just like the recurrent neural network. So everywhere it will try to create a connection. Here is where the attention weightages will be created. Attention means trying to create an association between the words. And we are trying to assign the weightages for the stronger connection and the weaker connection by using which it is trying to understand the relationship and the association between the words. And then plus there will be this kind of a feed forward network. Feed forward network will be there. All right. So which will be getting connected to each other and then it will be able to generate some kind of an encoding here. So encoding is created guys. All right. So this encoding now, what will happen now? Simultaneously, what is happening guys? Let's try to understand. Okay guys, uh, now Chandana has shared the attendance link. You can uh, take it from here. You can mark your feedback and attendance. Okay. So in the chat box, you'll find the attendance link. Okay. Now, guys, uh, let's try to understand what is happening here. So, once I am at step five, 
I am able to understand that this process will happen. And at the step of five guys, there will be one encoding which will be coming out. Let me draw that encoding with the yellow color now. So this encoding will be the output. This is the output which will be generated guys. This output will now go here to the decoder. This will go to decoder. Now what is happening here? Let's try to understand. Along with this entire encoding, whatever happened, whatever text we passed here, whatever output we have received, that output is created here, stacked here in between. In between this, okay, in between here. Between this artificial neural network and LST here. And now what is happening is, let me draw this with a different color now. Along with this process, what is happening here, when we are trying to train our encoding at a step 5, seem simultaneously, guys, what is happening at a step 7, I said step 7, we are passing this input here. And at a step 8, what is happening? Step 8, guys. That what is happening is here. So whatever uh, tokenization we have created for the original text, right? And that tokenization which converted into the embedding and in the position encoding, that will also be given as an input here to the decoder. The same input which passed on here after the position encoding to encoder, same has been given to the decoder as well. And along with that, the decoder guys will try to give this output at a step seven, which we generated as a result of this entire encoder. That that is why you can see this connection out here. So that will be given in between here and then, then it will try to start generating the words. It will start predicting. It will start the prediction of the words guys. Prediction of the words and it has everything now. So it has the output also the how uh, encoded output look like. Now what will happen? Whatever the output here, it will be something called as a into the numbers. Now that numbers will be taken here and along with the original encoding because what numbers are there that numbers real root has to be understood by decoder then only it can create association then basis of that guys it will try to generate a, or try to start predicting the words that prediction will be done and then this is how in the end you will be able to get your translation translation okay so this is what is the entire architecture of the entire transformer look like and for creating this transformer so for creating this uh, last thing output guys we are using something called as softmax function here. Softmax. This softmax function will try to generate the probabilities here. Probabilities, okay. The generator probability. So probability will be two types of probability. One will be random, one is greedy. I'll explain you next further with the example now. Greedy and the random. R and greedy, I say greed. So this will create a probabilities and based on the probabilities, guys, it will try to rank them and rank them. Okay, let me write as a rank. And then ranked output will be received here. Ranked output will be received. All right, cool guys. So this is how the things will work. So please let me know if you have any doubts or question. So let's take this example. Meanwhile, I'll try to take you through the example now. So what I'm going to pass here is I'm going to pass here and let's try to understand how the actually text is getting generated using the transformers. All right. So let's let me pass one sentence here. Okay. As an input, I'll explain you in detail like whatever things we have seen. Now I'll try to explain you in detail like what is happening through theoretically. Okay. So what will happen? How the number will get generated and from the number how the text will get generated. Okay. So uh, let, let me write this way. Now input what I'm trying. Now the output guys. Output is in English. Output is English. Output is English language. And then input here I'll write it in German. I'm going to write one sentence here in the German and I'm trying to create a similar sentence here in the English. Okay. So now I try to understand uh, uh, from the pictorial point of view, all the process which we have seen here, all the process. Okay. Same process. I'll explain you now here with the example. Now I will try to convert this uh, in the uh, kind of a text generation. Now we'll try to understand how they generate the text with the probability. Okay. And then I'll try to go into the prompt engineering and we'll try to explain certain structures and certain concept will try to understand and we'll make a code walkthrough as well. Okay. Uh, I know it's a uh, 30 minutes, but it is still a good time in hand. Okay. So guys, so please uh, let me know if you have any questions, any doubts meanwhile. So we can continue. I'll try to take some questions as well. Okay. Accordingly. So let's, let's do one thing. Uh, I am going to write one sentence here. Ish. Ish. Lieber. Okay. Ish. Guns. Lieber. Guns. Guns. G U N J guns ish ish guns liver L I E B E liver ish guns liver let's say M L I'm writing for the space I'm writing in shortcut guys let's imagine I have written entire thing ish liver machine learning okay so this is what I'm passing here let's try to understand here ish guns liver machine learning 
means i like machine learning very much okay i love machine learning very much this is what i am saying guns means very liber means love like okay machine learning you know ish means i ish means i this is what i have to convert now i love machine learning okay in english this is how the translation works correct so let's try to understand how it will work now let me change my color now let's try to understand here what is going to happen is there pronoun resolution necessary to build the uh, llm model in the indian language pronoun uh, means uh, what we have to do is you have to do a pos tagging actually ma'am kalpa ma'am you have to do a pos tagging so with the pos tagging uh, and uh, name entity recognition you will be able to create a grammatical context out there and then it will be able to take care don't worry you will have to don't have to uh, worry about it they have all pre trained uh, uh, models like trees transform model you can uh, if you are creating from the scratch then you, okay you have to worry about it but if you are not uh, have to worry about this thing because they, these things are already taken care by the advanced transformer model like gpt kind of a model so you can directly use them and uh, try to train them only thing what you have to do let's imagine uh, kalpana ma'am you are uh, let's uh, i guess by looking at your name you are marathi right so if you are to create one kind of llm model which can generate a marathi text right so i don't know i am guessing ma'am maybe marathi right you are uh, so if you are generating some kind of a marathi text you want to build a llm model which can generate a marathi text based on the whatever queries are there okay so you have to use this model but at the time of the input you have to provide the marathi inputs all right i right, right so by looking at your name i can make it out there you are a marathi person so uh, let's see ma'am uh, if you are try to create this kind of a large language model where you have to translate into the marathi only thing is you have to give give the input tokens in the marathis okay input you have to re be ready like you have to create a corpus it is called as corpus in the corpus there will be different marathi words and you can give a language that language to the transformer it will be able to create entire thing grammatical relationship everything like we have seen here positional encoding multi head attention and everything and it will be able to do that job okay this is like if you are trying to create from the scratch then you have to worry about this pronouns and all okay all right i think i have answered your question let's try to understand guys so let's try to understand now what will be the step two now what i am going to do so what will happen now everyone seen the process what is going to happen now we have to convert this entire sentence okay ma'am thank you appreciate it let's try to convert this entire uh, words now in the english word and my result will be i love machine learning let's try to understand what will happen now step 1 step 1 is what step 1 is guys tokenization how to perform a tokenization what will happen now this uh, ish will get converted to a number now this guns will get converted to a number and this liba will get converted to one number so 1452336070 this is what has happened now okay okay sir kartik prabhu sir you are saying something you can write okay i will try to take some uh, questions if you want and uh, feedback link is already given sir uh, you can use that feedback link and attendance link it is same and you can give and mark your attendance all right so it is shared by chandra in the comment chat box so please try to mark there okay? and from amar as well now all right guys so now like to understand what is happened so first thing is tokenization step 1 tokenization happened okay tokenization then what will happen tokenization will create a this kind of words now the length will be 5000 vector the vector length will be 5000 right so that is the problem now now what will happen embedding step 2 step 2 will try to perform a embedding guys so what will happen this embedding will be created here in the feature representation and will try to create a this kind of a matrix here so it will be uh, created in kind of a embedding n1 n2 n3 and that embedding will be word embedding or word embedding will be created a multiple matrices will be created around this right so then what will happen then we'll try to create a one thing step step 3 drive create a positional encoding as here positional encoding so what is going to happen here see here along with this one you can see here a multiple matrices is getting created here right so this n1 along with this n1 i am try to associate m1 the position vector then n2 so i am trying to assign with m, m m2 n2 with m2 and n3 with the m3 guys so this will create this way it is going to create a positional vector here right so once we create a positional vector you guys know right what is the step to uh, the second step uh, sorry fourth step step one i pass my ish guns libe uh, machine learning so ish guns and libe got converted into the numbers these numbers are they have received here position uh, numbers this number has been converted into the embedding by feature representation i created into the 50 kind of a numbers a 50 kind of a matrices here that matrix will now get association with the word one kind of a position encoding so i try to associate with this kind of a position vector once this position vector is created guys now this is my encoder here 
this is my encoder encoder now what it, first step it will try to do so it will try to pass through the lstm or gre networks lstm or gru networks and it will try to create a multi head attention you can see here multi head attention it will try to create a multi head attention multi head attention means it will try to understand the relation between ish guns libe and like this way it will try to write here ish g u n j guns l i e b e libe then ml and same word will be written here ish guns libe ml now what i am trying to do is i am trying to create a relationship so what it is trying to do or what it is trying to understand here so what is the relationship ish is i so i has a relationship with the machine learning this way sorry then guns is uh, guns is also have guns means very but ish is also having a relationship with the like so libe means love okay ish love and machine learning ish love machine learning this kind of a connection will be there and this will be very strong connection actually very strong connection so i am going to create a very thick line here so the weightages will be high the whatever the attention weights i'll be giving the attention weight will be very high so by using this i am trying to create a connection or kind of association association of ish i with the libe with the ml okay with the libe and ml and there will be also connection between guns and uh, ish but the uh, relationship will be like this way a thin relationship will be there very very thin relationship i am trying to create with this different color now there is also relationship with the, this one there is also relation here 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 so this kind of a entire multi head attention will be created guys so multi head attention weights there is will be weights associated based on the weightages and importance and this is what has been done here and that weights now what is why we are trying to bring this artificial neural network because i have to learn what is my formula for artificial neural network what they learn what is the equation here y equal to wx plus b so what they learn my weights and biases this is what i have to learn my attention weights multi head attention so i have to learn these weights i have to learn add some biases here and i have to learn these weights this is what the backward propagation will do here it will try to do using the gradient descent algorithm it will try to learn all these multi uh, multi head uh, multi head weightages which is called as multi head attention and it will try to understand what is the relationship what is the thickness of this line and how is the weight carried out here and for creating the weights and what are the weightages, weightages will be there what will be the weightages high which will be what is a lighter one and based on that it will try to learn here in the artificial neural network whatever learning is done now it is in the form of this entire matrices that matrices will be passed on here in between layer for the references that will become here as an input here try to understand so here will be input and here is the lstm neural network here is the lstm neural network it will become an input here so this input will be taken it will generate one output that output will be again passed on here we have seen recurrent neural network architecture and there will be neurons here and here it will try to receive a inputs here x1 x2 x3 x4 right this is what is happening here and on top of that again to learn so here is the generation process will start now what is happening here let's try to change the color here so what is happening here once i try to create this encoder this will be passed on here and along with the same time now step we have seen to pass step number 5 at step number 6 now at step number 6 what i am trying to do the whatever the encoding whatever the tokenization i have write tokenization encoding okay tokenization and encoding and then positional encoding okay all this information will also be passed on here passed on to my decoder i am writing d capital here to my decoder model decoder model will be the, this one so which will try to accept this information here t information e information p information tokenizer encoding then positional encoding that will again go here it will create a this kind of attention here again the weights will be learned upon and that weights learning process will be again passed on here to the artificial neural network and then similar work will done this kind of attention mechanism will also work and here is the probability is generated by using this kind of a soft max function it will try to generate a probability generate the probability and now what once that probability generated now it will try to generate the probability the which word will come first which will come second which will be third which will be fourth the ranking will be there position encoding will be there and by using this guys it will try to generate i it, uh, so now what is the similar word for ish could be me could be i could be he and out of that what is the strong probability let's say probability for this me is me is 0.7 i is for 0.8 and for he is 0.6 So point eight is my highest probability. It will take I first, then it will try to take love, and similarly it will try to take machine and learning. So this way, guys, entire position, entire transformer 
it will try to generate again whatever the generation has been done guys that generation first year will be generated in the numerical format only let me write it that with a different color now so whatever the generation will be done that will be not directly not the uh, sentences guys that will not be the sentences that will be the position encoding here that position encoding will be the tokens that token will get converted to the text later on so what we are generating tokens here actually so tokens are nothing but the numerical form and this was that is why you can see a number here 9873 they don't look like this 1452336 you can see here the different numbers are getting generated right same process same is happening everything and this by creating this kind of a different numbers now they are able to generate the english languages cool guys everyone understood now how this entire transformer is generating the text and how the entire translation we have seen entire machine level translation how it is gen generating this german to the english now all right so this process is happening i know the diagram look very messy but you guys have might have understood the entire process what is happening what is going on so let's recap once again so i am passing here ish guns guns libe libe ml so what is going to happen here so first thing will be the tokenization here so i am trying to perform a tokenization token i am writing which is converting into the numbers here all right so thank you sir so once we convert the number port position encoding this encoding will be this big 5000 size will be there so the size will be 5000 which is actually a huge dimension why i am creating guys from 5000 to here you can see embedding which will be created in the 50 size because if i try to take the 5000 it will take years to train my model years to train my model that will be very very difficult model so true because what will happen that 5000 means i will have a 5000 columns here 5000 means 5000 columns here so features will be 5000 so 5000 features will be 5000 columns here and that columns will have a row number one row number two row number three which will be my weightages 0 0.2 0 0.3 and that has to be understood by my classification algorithm classification algorithm or detection algorithm that is the problem guys yeah yeah so nani ma'am yes i will providing uh, the recording you will have this recordings again right so what is happening why we have a 5000 that will be 5000 columns so to reduce that we are using this embedding now so you understood what is embedding so we are creating this embedding we have seen here so we are created here using the human being using this kind of a, a food feature then the royal feature and then the feline feature and here will be the uh, words like this one man woman men woman right king queen and this will be the numbers and wherever it they doesn't fit there will be like a minus numbering right so by using this guys i am able to convert these 5000 columns into the 50 to 60 columns only this is what the process will happening here right so let's revise here so that is what is happening here so let me rub these things so that is the problem that is why we have to create something called as embedding after converting the tokenization i have to create an embedding and then guys once i convert the embedding guys then let me write the different color now so let's use black color now all right so in once embedding is done guys which i left with the 50 matrices now you have understood that the position is very important so position if i swap a position entire meaning will change for the sentences right this is what you are saying grammatically this is very important to retain the position so i am creating position encoding pe position encoding you can see here encoding is created for this number so positions has been retained then this information will be passed on to my multi-head attention which is nothing but an encoder here it is an encoder which contains of this kind of a lstm network and plus the artificial neural network you can see here so this artificial neural network ann will be able to learn the weights and biases the so weights and biases will be learned and this will be tried to create here which is a this kind of a network here actually you guys already know that a recurrent neural network look at this one it's take the output of the previous state previous state output and it, it will try to combine the current y t equal to zero here it is y t equal to minus one so previous state information it is trying to club here now it is passing here which is time zero then it will try to process here between the neurons and it will be able to generate output at y t that y t will be again provided here for the next y t plus 1 so it will be x2 likewise y t plus 3 and so on means that is related to the time and related to the time it will be able to generate different different outputs 
that output will again be passed on, again be passed on. This way, it will be able to create an entire attention weightages, guys. This in kind of a neural network is called as LSTM network. So this is a LSTM or kind of a GRU network, which has a memory cell also. If you try to go back and read the architecture, you'll see that there is a memory cell, there's a context changes. If I'm saying I'm Vikas and all of a sudden, if I try to change the context, I'll say, I am a Vikas and then uh, I am from Pune, Maharashtra, I can speak Marathi and all of a sudden if I change the context that I, I like machine learning, I am delivering machine, means my context is changing, means what is happening now, I am talking about my profession. So I have to retain some information that I am Vikas Maharashtra but I am trying to teach machine learning. So these two things, means some addition will be there, some minus will be there. So kind of a context change will be there, all the thing, update gate, information gate, updation, deletion, memory cell, all these things will happen. And then it will try to create a multi-head attention. You can see here attention means trying to create an association and the relationship between the words. And that weightages will be learned here by artificial neural network. That will be given to the decoder here. This is a decoder. Along with this entire processed information, they are also receiving this initial encoding. This initial encoding is also coming here as an input along with this uh, input from the process input from the encoder. Encoder's output is also given here. Plus they have a original input here. That is also given, same process happens and then guys, it will try to generate a probabilities here by using softmax. Why softmax? Because it has it has a formula like this one, e to the power y minus summation power e to the power y because whenever we have a multiple classes, because here multiple classes will be there, multiple probabilities. Let's imagine the probability for I, love and you. So this is the probability point 0.8. This is the probability point 0.2 and this is the probability point 0.2. So if I try to sum them, it will be 1.2. So which is wrong probability has to be between one so that is why they are using softmax function which which take this formula e to the power y minus e to the power y summation of all the other classes i equal to one to n minus one other classes and this is class one so maybe these are the other classes i y i from one to n minus one because one is minus here because of this and it will try to sum the probability between one so for the multi-class classification and then it will try to generate the ranking the numerical encodings are created tokens and those tokens will get converted to the text there and that the translation will happen guys all right so i hope you guys are able to understand clearly so how the entire transformer architecture works upon and what is the entire things uh, that how they are able to convert this text to text to learning right or machine level translation are done here so this is encoder this is decoder this is position encoding multi-head attention you are guys are able to understand anything now you guys are well versed how the transformer works right Guys, then I wanted to actually start with the prompt engineering. What is prompt? What is few short learning, one short learning? How the sampling is done? How they are able to pass these tokens? What is max tokens? What is context window? What is top P, top N? What is the penalty they provide? What is the temperature actually? How these tokens are getting generated? And what is the life cycle of the entire project life cycle? But before that, before we start this one, I wanted to sh showcase you one kind of a code example here, code walkthrough. That we'll try to start tomorrow with the prompt engineering and the entire life cycle. And we'll try to, once we understand this life cycle, I'll try to tell you how the chat GPT getting trained with the supervised fine tuning, uh, the mimicking the human preferences and the reward model and what is the proximal policy optimization model. These are the three steps where the chat GPT get trained and what exactly happened in the step is created here. So that we'll try to understand. We'll try to understand one more architecture from the large vision model that how the image is getting generated because this chat GPT generate text we try to understand how the vision model, which is encoder decoder model only, how they generate a, from text to images. Okay. So then guys, uh, then we'll try to come to the practical implementation. We'll try to generate one kind of a chat GPT kind of application. Today, what I'm going to do is now we still have a 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, I'm trying to showcase you using the transformer, using the transformer. How can we generate a text? Okay. So let me share with you guys my entire code window here. So just give me one moment. I will share one only within a five line of a code guys within a five line of a code you will be able to generate the entire architecture and showcase you how to generate this one all right just give me one moment and then I can show you how to generate the entire uh, transformer architecture all right so let me share with you guys my window here all right so within guys uh, uh, now you guys are able to see my repo right github repo so guys uh, this repo i will share with you don't worry uh, this is a very very simple model guys now what is my entire step here let's try to understand what i am trying to do here i am by using the transformer model guys from the hugging face actually from the hugging face is a platform guys uh, let me tell you so what is my entire steps out here 
and what we are going to do what is this architecture is all about let me tell you in one minute and we can make a code walk through or you can ask me questions as well so whatever questions you guys will have i'll try to explain you also so let's let's take one moment please okay so what i have to do what is my steps actually let's try to understand that so one moment guys one minute let me adjust my windows actually. So let's try to understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So first step, what, what I have to do here is I have to install guys. So what I will be doing, what, what is the thing we are going to install here? What is the steps here? We are trying to create a text generator here. I am passing the text and will be generating the text. Okay. What is the model I will be using? I'll tell you model. Model name is Chat uh, GPT. GPT model will be using, but the model name is GPT Neo. What is this GPT Neo model? Let's try to understand this. Actually, guys, uh, Chandan has shared the feedback link and attendance link once again for day two, guys. You can mark your attendance and feedback. Okay, so let's try to do a code walkthrough here, guys. So I'm using this GPT Neo model actually. GPT Neo. So this is a pre-trained model guys. This is available on the hugging face. Actually, this is a platform guys, hugging face. Okay. I'll try to showcase you. Don't worry. I'll, uh, whenever we'll going forward with this, uh, practical implementation, I'm going to showcase you this hugging face uh, platform is hugging, uh, face platform guys. It contains all the pre-trained model actually pre-trained model. I'll show you in detail. This contain all the pre-trained model. What pre-trained model they have. This is called as transfer learning models. Transfer learning models, okay. Transfer learning models. So these models are already there. They are pre-trained. Okay. We have to just download that model. Now, what is this chat GPT new model actually? Any new model. Guys, this model is trained. This is very, very huge model, guys. This huge model that uh, consists of the 10 GB of the data. It has a 10 GB of a capacity, guys. Uh, size of this model is 10 GB actually. This model size is 10 GB. So it takes some time. That's why I'm not running live with you. Uh, that's why. Uh, try to understand what is this GPT Neo model is there. G this is a transformer model, generative pre-trained transformer model, GPT Neo guys. This GPT Neo, let me rub these things now. GPT Neo model guys, it is trained on, it is trained on around 2.7 billion parameters. It is trained on 2.7 billion parameters guys. Billion parameters actually. So there is one more version actually, one more lighter version is also available guys. If you want actually, so this geo GPT new model, GPT new model, this is trained on the 2.7 billion parameters guys. And it consists of the 10 GB size, 10 GB size. Okay. 10 GB size is their model size. So that's why I'm not trying to run. It will take some time. So what we'll do is we'll try to take this model. Now I will try to take this model and install from the hugging face. Okay. I'm trying to install from the hugging face. It is a pre-trained model. And once I install that model, guys, I'm going to install the entire pipeline. And once I install, guys, what we're trying to do is we're trying to generate some text by using the text. Okay. So this is a text to text, just like the same chat GPT kind of a model. But this model is a simple model, actually. This is not that large model. Like the chat GPT model is very, very huge, but like maybe 10 times better, uh, more than that. So this one is having only 2.7 billion parameters. The size is 10 GB, guys. And by using this model, we'll, what we'll try to do is we'll try to generate a code within the four lines. Maximum four lines more than enough for us. So within the four line, guys, we try to generate this model and we'll try to showcase this the output. Okay. So what I have to do, what are the steps I have to perform for that? Let's try to understand here. So what I have to do first, guys, uh, this is a transformer model. So what I have to do is first I have to install my dependencies here. So what dependencies I'm installing, let's try to understand here. I'm installing PyTorch guys, PyTorch version. Plus I'm using this one kind of a CU, uh, CU triple one torch vision and then the torch audio vision and audio. And then guys, I'm downloading from this kind of a entire link. Actually, this link is nothing, but this is a link from the PyTorch organization. So you guys know what, what is this PyTorch, right? PyTorch is a framework actually. The framework from the meta, which you can call this Facebook as well. Previously, it was called as Facebook company. And then there is a from framework you guys already know, TensorFlow and the Keras, which are the frameworks from the Google, right? So framework from the Google. Actually, what we're trying to do is, this time you are using PyTorch framework, which is a deep learning framework. And this framework, using this framework, we try to transfer, uh, download the transformer model. 
the nodal name is GPT Neo, and we'll try to set up that pipeline here. And by using the pipeline, we we'll try to provide one prompt here. One single prompt I will be providing. One prompt means one kind of a token here, one small sentence actually, and that sentence will become an input here. And basis of that sentence get, it will try to generate the multiple text, multiple text for us. Okay, this is what the model is there. So this model based on the Python. That's why I'm installing the dependency get. So we are installing and importing the dependencies. Dependencies is pip install PyTorch version 1.8. Then there will be Torch vision version 0.9. And then we'll be installing this version. And this is the link here. Don't worry, I'll share this with, uh, with you guys. The entire link I'll be sharing with you. So once we install guys dependency, it will take some time, like uh, two to five minutes. You guys will require, uh, then you can see here uh, this kind of a result that it downloaded the type Torch version, Torch vision, Torch audio, everything. This will be a successful message. Once you are able to install guys, then the second step is I'm going to install the transformer. So from there, this installation, I'm installing pip install transformer. Okay, simple line of code is there, pip install transformer. You can see here, uh, it will start installing the GPT Neo model here. GPT Neo, GPT Neo, you can see here, the entire model is getting generated guys. And once we generate guys from transformer, I'm importing a pipeline now. Understood now, as of now, very simple code is there guys. Only four line of code is there. So uh, first I installed my PyTorch. I will be uh, sharing this link with you guys. Don't worry. So I, I will be sharing this entire GitHub repo with you. So this is a very good example actually. How we can use the transformer. Let me share with everyone. Okay guys. I shared the uh, this entire GitHub repo link with you guys. So you can keep it for your reference. It is available in the chat box. So what we have to do is first we install the dependencies. That dependency I have installed by using this pip install torch, torch vision, torch audio from this link. Then I am installing transformer because we need a transformer model. Then I, this transformer model will install this GPT new guys. And from this model, I will be installing pipeline guys. From transformer, I am installing pipeline. Once I uh, set up my uh, pipeline guys, I have to create one generator now. So how I'll be creating generator using the pipeline function, this pipeline function. What I have to write is here. So I'm writing pipeline function. Then I'm passing one text generation. This is the job I have to do text generation. And then I'm passing as a model name. What is my model name? GPT new 2.7 billion parameter, right? So this is the second line we have created here, just here. So first this we have created just the pipeline, first line of a code. Second line of a code is guys, I am creating one generator. What generator I am creating? It is taking the background model as GPT new 2.7 billion parameter and it will be used for the text generation. This is what the heading, what task, what task I am trying to perform that I have written here, okay? Then for guys, what I am trying to do is I am creating one prompt here, simple. Third line of a code. I'm creating one prompt that uh, prompt you can write your own prompt like uh, what is the life what what do you feel like whatever question you have that question will be called as prompt here so I'm passing the prompt as my input here so I'm passing the current stock market okay so it will be able to tell me what is the current stock market then guys third line of a code is I'm creating my prompt and fourth guys this generator whatever the generator we are creating using the pipeline and this model now I'll be passing that prompt to my generator here see here I'm passing that prompt to my generator. I'm saying max length. What is this max length? I mean maximum how many uh, words you want to generate. When I'm trying to pass this, I'm saying 50 words is okay for me. So create me a result of 50 words. All right. Yeah, attendance tick will be shared once again by uh, okay guys, uh, by Chandana or Amar. So Amar or Chandana, uh, can you guys please share the attendance link once again? People are asking. Okay guys, so what we have done is first we install the dependencies. PyTorch, then we install the transformer from transformer guys. I've created one pipeline See here. Pipeline takes my job is text generation and my model is guys GPT Neo 2.7 billion parameter this line. Then I'm uh, creating one question here. You can see a question is prompt. Okay. So question is prompt guys. And then pa this prompt I'm passing to my generator. So what is my generator? Generator is nothing but my model here, my model. Okay. So then generator I'm passing my prompt. I'm saying maximum 50 words please create. As output, do sampling. Yes, do sampling. Uh, please create the sampling when you try to generate and temperature, I will talk about it tomorrow. So what is this temperature actually? This temperature guys, this can affect our probability generation actually. A probability generation. The temperature, if the temperature is high, if the temperature is high, means there will be more randomized generation. The randomized generation. Randomized means randomized probability generation will be very high randomization will be high and the temperature is less means the randomization will be less that that is called as temperature parameter okay so how the randomization has to be done so i am creating a 50 words out of output the, i am uh, saying that please do the sampling and temperature i am giving 0.9 okay and then generator i am calling and passing this input current stock market 
the moment i create guys and whatever the things will be there that will be stored in the res okay so you can see here i have printed my res here and generated text i'm uh, uh, selecting the index as generated text now you, once i run this guys you can see here what it has created now so it has created me 50 words uh, 50 words for me what it says here i asked what is the current stock market it has generated the result the current stock market is a unique market it is the incorporated some fundamental market characteristic together with the market philosophy human judgment and the human biases such as market timer price momentum crowd philosophy the stock market is likely any market for goods and services so this way guys it has generated only four line of a code guys and you are created a simple transformer just like the chat gpt kind of application only difference here is guys that the, this is not that big like the data which has trained and the size of this model is less as compared to chat gpt but this is the same model guys just just like this will be in free available right so all right you guys are able to understand now how to generate this kind of a generative AI text and how, how to create a simple uh, chatbot like if this could be a chatbot i'm creating one question you are generating the output only thing is like you have to create one kind of a ui here so in the ui this will be input window and there will be output window so you can write this here and it will generate an output here so that also i can show you here all right, guys. So I think uh, it's a time. So we'll try to conclude our session here for tomorrow. Hope you guys are able to understand the entire transformer architecture. You are able to understand how to generate even the text using the transformers, right? Many to many sequence machine learning translation. All right, guys. So thank you, Manjushri uh, sir, ma'am. All right, guys. So we'll try to conclude here. Uh, if you have any questions, any doubts, please let me know. Please let me know your feedback. Did you fire guys uh, enjoy today's session as well? hope uh, this was very intensive session how the entire transformer get trained beautiful concept of this entire encoder decoders position encoding right multi-head attentions all right guys amar has shared once again the feedback link if you want to mark your feedback or attendance please use this link for day two all right so guys please let me know your comments please let me know if you have any questions any doubts anything so how did you find today's uh, session Please let me know in the comment box and we'll try to continue tomorrow with the prompt engineering and the entire architecture of the chat GPT and we'll try to create a more and more advanced kind of a application. We'll try to make a uh, different application just like the chat GPT or using the open AI uh, API also we'll try to create something, right? We'll try to focus more on the different concept also like what is vector database, right? What is zero shot learning, one shot learning? What is a rag uh, augmented, uh, uh, retrieval augmented generation? So what are the fine tuning techniques available for this LLMs? We'll try to understand everything. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, day two. Guys, please let me know. 280 plus people are there. Couple of people, if you can share your feedback, thoughts, it will be very nice for me. Okay. And you can mark your attendance. Amar has already shared your attendance out here. And let me know if you have any questions, any doubts, guys. For next two minutes, I'll be available to answer your questions. Can share your feedbacks, doubts, questions, queries, suggestions. Yeah, Gangan Preet, please ping me if you have any questions. UI part, yeah, 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 guys. So for GPT model, I will share the code. I'll share the code with you guys. Don't worry. You can run that code and you'll get a similar kind of output. The UI part with, with the UI part, you will be able to generate the uh, this thing. I'll share that one tomorrow. How you can generate a UI uh, along with the UI, like in the UI window, you'll be able to type the thing, it will generate within the similar window, guys. Range of temperature, I will tell you guys, don't worry. When we'll try to learn this, I'll tell you at that time what is the range of temperature. It is a hyperparameter, guys. It is not a fixed value, actually. It is a hyperparameter. You have to keep on varying that parameter based on trial and error. Okay, I'll explain you this one. What is the range? What should be the optimal range? I'll explain. Don't worry. Yeah, guys, anything else? Yeah, Gagan Preet, thank you. Manasa, yes, I will share the code. Anything else, guys, please let me know. Any queries, any questions out here? Hope you found it with the four line of a code that implementation. Dr. Suman Bhattacharya, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your kind comment. Thank you. Come on, guys, show some excitement. Uh, please ping me fast. I know you guys have to uh, conclude the session. Ping me fast, like your feedbacks, questions. Come on, come on, guys, fast.
and we can end up the session in two minutes then. Please let me know any questions, any doubt, guys. Fast. What do you think? Heavy session or lighter session? You are able to understand. Let me ask it. Let me put it in this simple way, guys. So did you understand entire transform architecture? Did you find it complex, easy? Whether I was able to explain you, please ping me accordingly. So I can understand. Hope you found the entire presentation and everything fruitful. We'll get, uh, we, this PPT will be shared with you guys. Okay, guys. Ganpreet, thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Please let me know if you find this topic complex or simple. What do you think? Vinod Kumar is saying informative session. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you think, guys? Transform architecture, simple, difficult. Or need to go back again, check the things again, once again. Are you able to understand how the transformer generate the text? Now you can tell it to anyone. I know the entire architecture of GPTs. I know how the machine translation is done. Very simple. We have generated even. We have created a pictorial uh, process also, right? How to con convert one language to other language. Aisha, ma'am, thank you for your kind words. Anything else, guys, please let me know. Uh, I know some things are pending from my side. I'll uh, share that code as well with you. With the UI, this text generation. All right, guys, there are no further questions. Can we conclude the meeting then? Okay, Gahan is saying okay. Uh, okay. After five, not possible to concentrate. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. I'll try. Okay. Samila Rasi sir is saying that it is a bit complex, but good explanation. Okay, thank you, sir. Please share the attendance link once again. Okay, some ma'am, ma'am, we'll share. Uh, Amar or Chandana, can you guys please share once again the attendance link? Guys, whosoever not mark their attendance, please mark it. We're going to share the attendance links once again. So you can mark your attendance, guys. Or you can mark the uh, your feedback as well. So Amar has shared, guys, with everyone. The attendance and feedback link, it is same, guys. Uh, tomorrow, you will not be able to uh, keep your attendance for the day two. It is only active for today, right now. So please mark your attendance. Don't forget to mark your attendance feedback here. Amar has shared with everyone, guys. Please follow that link. Guys, if no other questions, no other doubts, then we can conclude now session. All right, I think everyone got the link once again. All right, guys, then uh, see you tomorrow then with more, much more deeper topics, front engineering, architecture of the GPT, how GPT get trained, then try to implement some use cases as well. All right. So more use cases I'll try to implement, guys. This time our focus should be more on the practical side. So we'll try to, yeah, yeah. Click attendance. Okay, once again, yeah. Actually, the problem is, guys, I'm not able to copy paste the link which Amar is sharing every time. So, sorry, Amar, uh, you have to paste it again. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, Deepak, uh, Amar is sharing the link with everyone once again, guys. Please mark your attendance. Yeah, okay, guys. All right, guys, then thank you very much. Uh, then we uh, will sign off for today and see you tomorrow with a more complex topic and we'll try to go get more closer to this GPT model. Right? The, uh, thank you very much, guys, once again. And thank you, Amar, for your kind.